So for the appropriate icing on the cake, if you will, we'll take a look at some social media comments. <clears throat> uh, making reference to the uh, Leonardo D DRS situation in West Plains and uh, vaccine mandates in general. Uh, Rachel writes, Sorry, but I would... I wouldn't count on the media reporting on it. Um, and this is uh, also a reference to the uh, the social media uh, video that we uh, showed a clip of earlier in this broadcast. Uh, she says, sorry, I wouldn't count on the media reporting on it. Uh, they're not fond of people that stand up for their rights. More power to y'all. I hope something comes of it. Well, hey, I'm not Steve Grant or anything, but, uh, you know, it's 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 been duly noted. So and. You know, standing up for your rights is, is one thing. Um, fortunately, this just isn't one of those things. Um, next, let's take a look at Mariah. Mariah says, good luck. We were forced at mercy, and a majority of employees fought it and never won. We lost many, many great employees due to the vaccine mandate, or due to the mandate. Uh, they weren't eligible for unemployment. Very few got religious exemptions, and they were told they had to test weekly alongside alongside, wearing an N95 mask all day. It sucks for sure. Look, if you're working in a hospital during a pandemic and you're not wearing some kind of a mask anyway, um, you know, that doesn't make any sense to me, first of all. You're working in a hospital during a pandemic, and you're not vaccinated, and you're not wearing a mask the hell are you doing like you probably these folks probably should be working you know at the bowling alley um you know because i'm sure there's one that's hiring uh, near you that's just kind of the most insane thing i think i've come across all day and we've we've uncovered quite a bit of insanity um that that's it really just doesn't get any more weird and 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 horrifying than that Can you imagine, first of all, can you imagine police officers refusing, refusing to wear, you know, the, the what is it, the, the, the Kevlar vest that they wear, uh, the uh, body armor that, that is mandatory in every single police precinct across the United States um, since 9-11? Since can, can you imagine, police, I'm not, I'm not going to do that. No, no, I... I spent my whole life. Um, I've been on the. I've been on the police force for 25 years, and I am not going to carry a gun or drive a car or wear shoes. And you don't have the right by the Constitution to force me. And I should, you know, at some point you've got to like the sanity has to has to just jump in. Um, preventative measures. If if you're not there to prevent infection, and and say to say to say to alleviate the problem, uh, you know, alleviate the purpose of your industry. Like, why do you even have a job if that's not what you're there for? Um, again, you can go work at the bowling alley. I'm just saying. Uh, you can't work at McDonald's because they have more than 100 employees and they require uh, vaccines too. Or you can test weekly. I guess there's always that, but apparently that's a problem too, right? Um, these folks should be thankful they've been able to keep a job this long. I don't understand how they're able to to even pay the electric bill, whether they have the... Moving on. Stephanie writes, walk out. Then where would they be? I'm not taking something that could kill me, no matter the job, pay, and all the BS. Well, the good news is no one in the United States, no one in the United States, no one in the United States has died from COVID-19, despite the plethora of ridiculous information uh, that's, that's being just disseminated by morons and liars and uh, grifters and, and scammers, no one in the United States has died from COVID-19, period. That's a fact. I mean, it could happen. It totally could happen. There are like 
you know, over 300 million people in the United States. There's a lot of folks here. And it's very possible that someone might take the vaccine one day and die. But it hasn't happened yet. Chances are looking good. So, rest assured. Chris writes, the mRNA vaccines don't change DNA or manipulate existing mRNA. Smoking alters your DNA. Sunburns alter your DNA. The MR mRNA vaccines don't enter the nucleus and don't interact with DNA or the, I assume he means cellular, um, he or she means cellular, uh, machinery that splices, splits, and transcribes mRNA and DNA. Eventually, mRNA vaccines are going to be used to treat cancer and other diseases. Uh, this is analogous to Fleming discovering penicillin. But if you have a moral quandary about mRNA vaccines, vaccinus, uh, assume that's vaccines, uh, the J&J &J vaccine is a conventional vaccine that doesn't use mRNA technology. So... Got choices, folks. Um, Rebma. Rebma. Rebma says, watch this a hit hole of a town. Whoa. Watch this a hit hole of a town fall on its face. The city is far from supporting the locals. Their only focus is how much they can make. Yikes. Uh, Kelly says, I mean, there would be no overturning of vaccine mandates because we've had vaccine mandates for decades and decades. All y'all participated in it for decades and decades. It's an established law. There's no wiping that off the books. Everyone got their kids vaccinated for school, uh, got them their shots. That's what that is. And as much as I know, people are going to be tempted to try that religious exemption thing. I'm just going to tell you right now, from what I've heard, you're not going to want to go that route because your company is not going to want to take the risk on you making trouble for them. So you can try it, but I guarantee you uh, they're going to find another reason to fire you. Well, uh, we are a red state, and that does include uh, at-will employment, so not wrong. Ellie, definitely not wrong there. Um... And which party is responsible for making this a possibility? You know, uh, we'll leave it to you. So Trent writes, um, there's a United States subcontractor. It's more than Lil Key, assuming that's likely. Um, wrong then, but that's cool. Um, it's more than likely that if everyone didn't get it or whatnot, they would cease to get contracts, which I'm pretty sure the owners over across the pond would not appreciate. It's really a pretty tough spot to be in. Well, sure, and they're they're uh, a subcontractor. They're 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 a contractor of the United States. Um, you know, that there's only so many countries who are, are going to be able to even afford um, the products that they sell, right? And the United States, well, we're, we're the world's biggest when it comes to the old war machines. So, uh, yeah, you're you're basically putting your cash cow to pasture over a, uh, you know over some misinformed people and some whack jobs. Some folks who are misinformed by other whack jobs, you know, um, it's a thing. But then again, why would you want to risk your job over not getting a vaccine? I mean, it's been a year. It's tried and tried and tested. Uh, no one's died from it. Um, in fact, there you're more likely to get complications um, to your health in general from I mean, this this is this isn't this isn't hard math, people. Uh, the risk to your life and limb is going to come from coronavirus itself, from COVID nineteen itself, more significantly more than it is from the vaccine. Now, if you have a health condition that prevents you, well, then you have a health condition that prevents you. If you're just lying because you're a jackass or for political grandstanding and posturing, well, then you don't deserve to have a job. I mean, that's just that. Just plain and simple. If you're willing to lie to your employer um, over something that's that important, like people who actually have 
medical issues and aren't able to get the vaccine, if you're willing to put them, lie to your employer to put them at risk to potentially die because you're a moron, that you kind of don't deserve to have a job at that point. And that's why this was put in place, because there are apparently a lot of people who fall into that category. Um, it's been a year. It's actually perfectly fine, you know, to call it, to call it what it is, call a spade a spade. Um, we saw that, right? Yeah. So moving on to Matthew. Um, oh, and this is, uh, I believe that Matthew, we're, we're making the transition to, uh, the, the proceeding segment on, uh, Arkansas and their, uh, ban of employers asking employees about their vaccine status. Uh, so let's jump in. Uh, Matthew writes, their love of big government telling private business how to operate is showing again. You know, one could make the argument that the federal government is a big government, but then again, if the state government is also encroaching on the rights of, the, the, you don't get to make an argument. You just get to pick a side and be a hypocrite. Um, Sydney writes, a, sippery, a slippery slope. It'll get stopped. Private business allowed to have the rules they want. Well, not necessarily. Um, if the state of Arkansas prevents employers from being able to ask employees about, that's, that's not actually businesses having the rules they want. That's the state demanding that businesses operate the way that the state wants them to. That's, you know... In, in the previous uh, comments, that's uh, that's big government. That's really, really big government. Just grandstanding uh, for the view, uh, anti-vaxxers. Oh, I, I misunderstood. She's actually for um, the uh, the elimination of the ban. Slippery slope. It'll get stopped. Oh, the legislation will get stopped. Well, it did. Good news. Um, private business allowed to have the rules they want, and you know, uh, within reason, at least at the state level regarding this matter, they do just grand ass standing for the few anti-vaxxers. So apologies, Cindy. <laughs> when you're dealing with all the rest of this garbage, it's uh, easy to, to, you know, to make a mistake here and there uh, with it. So my apologies. Uh, Lonnie writes from the article to get vaccinated or tested weekly. Don't want the vaccine. You have an option. It is simple and only takes a couple of minutes, so I have to wonder why all the fuss. Again, it's nothing more than political grandstanding by jackasses and people who are just spreading misinformation. I mean, that's all it is. They're willing to risk the lives of, you know, not themselves, because obviously that doesn't matter. Um, they'll say that, and that's the reason that they don't want to get the vaccine, but again... It's they're willing to risk the lives of others because of their political position, and that's just disgusting and horrifying. Um, and with Alyssa, we get to our last segment on uh, Governor Mikey P. Um, and his battle against uh, the digital underworld of, of, of constitutionally protected journalism. Um, Alyssa writes, what a waste of money. Parsons' feelings are hurt, so he's wasting tax dollars for revenge. He got caught with his pants down, and to be honest, as I said before, they did everything they could to uh, make that as paint-by-numbers as possible, and uh, somehow Governor Mikey P. can't be thankful. Uh, John writes, The Post-Dispatch acted ethically uh, by informing Missouri authorities an actual black hat hacker would have sold the data on the dark web. Now that we know Missouri's IT security is weak, I suppose it's too much to expect that these IT experts have contracted for dark web surveillance to monitor whether this data is being auctioned off to criminals. It might be worth it to do some penetration testing as well. Well, John, um, that that would be the that would be a smart move. Um, you know, upping upping our game since you know that we have a problem and since we just had a problem, um, that that'd be too much like right, I think, for Governor Mikey P. So uh, you know, he, he's more into attacking journalists. I mean, basically that's that's what the fearless leader would do, right? I don't see really any difference in his actions. Uh, Trent writes, so if I call nine one one and report the bank. I left the door open. Will the bank have me arrested for burglary? 
Oh, that's so real. And will it cost $50 million to close the door? Partisan is insulting voters with this ranting. Ah, could not agree more. Um, that's real, though. You should consider it a, a blessing in disguise. Um, as was mentioned in the article, a public service. That's a perfect way to put it. Um, Connor writes, uh, lastly, what level-headed and informed people we have here in the Ozarks, and I think that pretty well sums up the theme of today's show, right? So, let's... Um, if you like this kind of content, uh, you can visit my website, uh, chainsawccc.com. Uh, you can feel free to uh, take a gander at uh, my YouTube channel. It's located at chainsawccc.com slash YouTube. Um, if you're interested, I do have uh, referral links uh, for such and such as two free stocks with Weeble. That'll be linked down below in uh, the, the comments of my YouTube channel. Um, also, uh, free deals with uh, uh, M1 Finance to get you some extra cash there if that's something that may interest you. And yeah, appreciate you sticking around, folks. We'll see you in the next one.